And welcome back to a brand new edition of the Podmen. I'm Brad. I'm Brian. I'm Podman Ron. And happy 2023, Podmen. How is it going so far this year? We're we're a couple of weeks into the new year, and uh, we have no plan whatsoever. None. Nope. None. The uh, the our plan to hit 200 episodes in 2022. Uh, yeah, and the road to 200 was a bust. Yeah. Huh. How, yeah. how many? Where are we at? What episode is this? I think like one eighty-seven, maybe something like that. Oh yeah, we yeah. we missed big time. <laughs> um, so I think if we set a new goal for the road to two hundred by the end of this year, I think we could make it. One a yeah, month, probably. One a month, yeah. average one a month. I think there we can do better. I think we can do better than that. I know PMR wants to do one a week. But uh, you know we, we well, all, well, PMR's been the one that's been kind of dragging. Look, like, uh, busy. He had a migraine that? the other day. Hey, Trips man. to Nashville. Yeah, I'm on New Year's place. Eve. I'm all over the place. <laughs> I mean, he's very busy. I'm just. I'm. <laughs> I feel. I feel like uh, he really <laughs> stiffed us by uh, saying, you know, not tonight. I've got a headache. Sorry. Yeah. Multiple times. Yeah. Multiple oh, times. Sorry. sorry. So, <laughs> wow. oh well. All right. So once a month, this should be our goal here, PMR. Let's not get overly eager. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that works for me. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, and we would be remiss to say that uh, uh, we, we're missing Alex again. Where is Alex on this very special day? I would I would say he was out uh, celebrating his birthday today because today is his twenty second birthday. Wow, twenty so. second birthday! The youngest so, pod man getting old, irreplaceable. Well, what about Pod Boy? Well, that's why I say that he's that he's a Pod Man, but he's replaceable. Oh, that's true. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, is, uh, yeah, where is Pod Boy at? I'm not sure. <laughs> he's around. He's you around. Where it's a. It's nine thirty. Do you know where you're? Sitting? Brian just sequesters <laughs> himself in the nerditorium, and it's kind of like one of those uh, panic rooms. He just locks himself in there. He doesn't have to hear the screams and the dog barking and things like that. Oh well, be prepared. The dog's going to lose it here in a minute. Tamara hadn't made it home yet, so oh boy, when, uh, when oh she boy. gets here, it's going to be, you know, all right, Katie bar the door. You so just be prepared. No, okay. Well, hey, so, uh, so yes. Yeah, so, so let's wish uh, Podman Alex a happy birthday, and maybe one day uh, in our road to 200 in 2023, maybe he will join us. Um, guys, we, it's been a while. I mean, we have no plan here, as we talked about. Uh, there's so much news that has come and gone. I don't know if there's a whole lot really to talk about other than uh, uh, some celebrity shocks here. Yeah, we, there's yeah, very little that wouldn't wouldn't be too stale. Like, uh, but yeah, but some breaking stuff today. We had uh, this. This is not good uh, for uh, for fans of Rick and Morty. But uh, <laughs> Justin Roiland was arrested uh, and charged earlier today with domestic violence. Yeah. So for criminal domestic battery, false imprisonment, according to a criminal complaint. Oh, and it goes back to May 2020 in California. So uh, hopefully this doesn't kill Rick and Morty. Although I might. Although I might. Or give them new material. Mm-hmm. Eh, last That's season. That last, that last month wasn't exactly like, you know, great. So, so he, had to the, take his, he had to take his anger out on somebody, I guess. Yeah, his frustration. Yeah. Well, it was 2022, right? So he was stuck. Whoever he was... Whoever he was stuck at home with. Oh, I feel like, sorry for him. Our thoughts yeah. and prayers. He got on his last nerve. That's pretty much it. Yeah, could it be false imprisonment in, tw- in May 2020 when we're in lockdown? Yeah, that's kind of, we're all that way, we were, I think. Yeah, yeah we're all imprisoned. Yeah. And, and in retrospect, yeah. falsely, some yeah. might say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. Dr. Fauci. <laughs> Dr. Fauci, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so hopefully that will uh, the uh, we've got whatever we've got uh, nine more seasons of Rick and Morty to get through. So hopefully that will uh, that will happen. 
Hopefully Dan Hartman. Uh, Dan Harmon. Didn't he have some trouble not too, too long ago? Dan Harmon's just slowly going insane. Oh, have you okay. seen the stuff he keeps posting on Twitter and Instagram? No, at all? no. He's apparently bought the house next door, and he's fitting it with all these, like, camera rigs and surveillance cameras, and, and he's gutted the house. And, like, for whatever reason, it's, like, all this cinematography stuff inside the house. Hmm, where he can just like go live and and like he's constant he can be videotaping himself uh, you know 24 7 but he's got like uh you know one of the uh the uh camera rigs like the that's like on the train track right kind of he has it like going through his den wow. and stuff it's bizarre like uh maybe, yeah, he's, maybe he's going to be writing or producing the updated silver spoons hey, hey now. <laughs> the train track or he could have a drone camera flying around he could, yeah, a drone ring camera. That yeah. thing was cool. You didn't like that PMR? Yeah, it was really cool. It just needed a face. Uh, that's yeah. the number. I think that's one of Asimov's rules of robotics, right? You know, uh, they can't be programmed to kill a human. They can't. You know, that, they must have a face. They must have, they a, must face. have a face. A friendly right? face, exactly. But yeah, you, you know, put George Lucas kind of fucked it up for everybody because you know they put made R two D two and now nothing has a face. Oh wow! How about that? Robots. Yeah. Uh, PMR is coming on strong with some accusations here. Hey, I just calls it like I see. Well, it. now I mean, Hal didn't have a face though. Hal was he really a, robot? a robot? He wasn't really no, a robot though. Computer, You're right. Yeah. Okay, that's the difference. You're right. Uh, we gotta get into the robot android debate again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's throw a computer in there as well. People love it. People, Fan, the fans love the the uh, android hero. robot debate. Uh, the great geek you know, debates. Remember those. Champions Robotic. Back in the day. Alien Android superhero. superhero. Yeah. Yeah. That crash was a good one. Uh, yeah. So uh, what else we had? Other bad news. Uh, Hawkeye. Jeremy Renner. The, again, God. this is old news. Uh, but he's uh, the fanboys rejoicing. I mean, when we first heard about his snowplow or snowblower incident, everybody kind of wrote him off. I think is like, wow, this does not sound good. He's been airlifted. He's in critical condition. A couple of days later, well, he looks like he's beat up, but doing fine. Uh, well, and then when they released, I, I, at first I thought this is a typo. They're getting news out so quick. Somebody's made some sort of typo, <laughs> a typo because they said the snowplow that ran him over. Right. Weighs not 1,400 pounds. 14,000 pounds. <laughs> it's a one and a half ton snow plow that ran over the man. How is, how is he not just paced a, a red mist? Why is he just not flat with tread marks on him? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't. So yeah, more power well, to it. You, like, know, you know, I've been reading stuff like today. I read something that they may have to amputate his leg, but they're, they're oh, really that. Yeah, um, there's a, a big fear that it was too much damage done to his leg, and they're going to have to amputate it. So he's definitely not out of the woods yet. No, no, that's crazy though. Like, uh, and I guess it was, it was, it was it his kid on it. Oh, was it? it I, I, I think was, they're uh, being really hush hush. But early on, they said that it was a family member, and he went, and the family member got it stuck, uh, and he went to help get it unstuck. And when he was trying to get the thing, it, it engaged when he wasn't uh, in the in the the thing, and it rolled right. over. Him. Wow! But you, you haven't heard that since like the very first day or right, so. Right. So. You know, if it is, if it was like his kid that did it, maybe they're wanting to like downplay that as much as absolutely possible, so it doesn't completely screw the kid up. But right. yeah, that was the, the early the early reports was like the the first full day afterwards. That was the stuff they were saying. So I don't know. All man. I know is uh, his sister said today that he was crushing all the, mm. the doctors' uh, therapy sessions. He's Gotta crushing be a better it. way to say that. Yeah, that was a good choice it. of words on there, but mm, okay. Well, like the old Tobias Fuque. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I blew well, myself. <laughs> <laughs> I blew myself. Well, thoughts and prayers go out to Jeremy Renner, of course. Uh, um, what else is going on? <laughs> is that about well, it? Oh, uh, well, breaking news tonight: oh. Lisa Mar- Elvis's daughter, Lisa Maria Presley. Uh, which was rushed to the hospital for cardiac arrest today. She wasn't breathing. They got her back, and she didn't stay long because she died. So. Wow. 
So she is dead at the very, very young age of 54. Mm. Just a baby. <laughs> a mere baby. Oh, those 54 year olds, you gotta watch. That's when you really have to start watching it. It's when you turn 54, from what I hear. I wouldn't wouldn't know. Wouldn't know. Well, thoughts and prayers out to the Elvis family. Yeah, you know, they've had some tragedy in their lifetime. He died 40 years ago, and then today. Yeah, that's tough. (laughs) <laughs> right. The, uh, the right. Elvis <laughs> curse. The Elvis curse continues, <laughs> just like the the Hogan's Heroes curse. Oh man! Uh, wow, we are out of shape. I mean, I'm not we, talking we, like just physically out of shape, but <laughs> podcastily out of shape. I think. <laughs> well, uh, these are some dead stories. These uh, are. <laughs> what? What do you mean, dud? Oh, well, you know what? Let's talk Elvis about something. Elvis's daughter just died. That's huge. That is huge. Uh, she was married to Michael Jackson. She yeah. was married to Nick Cage. She was married to some other guy. Yeah. Uh, a couple other dudes, and she has a daughter that's an actress. Yeah. I mean, that's that's something. <laughs> right. That's Brian, right. You there? I, I thought the I thought the. Uh, picture froze there <laughs> now, I, was, I was going to mention that we'll have news or something to talk about here in the next month or so or a couple of weeks or a month or whatever uh with the flash trailer and then that got me thinking ant-man trailer we can talk about ant-man trailer yeah talk about Ant-Man that for trailer. a good 30 minutes at least <laughs> we can stretch that some bitch out at least we uh you got the uh, today debuted uh velma oh on, i've uh, not HBO watched that Max. Yet. Which people are hating. Poor Mindy Kaling. Isn't it? Is not Scooby Scooby Doo is not in it, is he? Correct. No, they can't use Scooby Doo because the adult um, humor. <laughs> and I use air quotes around humor. <laughs> adult <laughs> and what, humor. What, what did it your own? HBO Max. Uh, but this is this is my favorite quote um, from uh, Entertainment Weekly. Like th- this isn't from like you know Joe Blow's blog. Man. This is. Yeah. This is the review from Entertainment Weekly. The guy said, it's a prequel that recasts diversely, reorients sexually, and over backstories generally. It should be fun, but it's a self-aware slog. Everyone talks like a TV writer who only knows other TV writers. (laughs) (laughs) Not good. I'm just going to watch it just to... uh, I don't watch it. I'll give the first episode a look. So... Yeah, we've got that. That that actually launched today on mm-hmm. HBO Max. Yeah. The uh, um, Rob Lee. Did you guys see this thing I said about Rob Leefield? Yeah, what was that all about? And so PMR will, will chime in uh, later on, I guess, because he's been listening to that podcast. But but um, Rob Leefield set the record straight mm. that he was not, in fact, raped oh, yeah. by a pride of lions while walking through the Sahara naked. Now, so uh, hopefully most of our listeners do know who Rob Lee Field is. But Rob Lee Field was a big time artist in the 90s, uh, drew lots of pockets on the X-Men, gave people lots of guns and little feet. Uh, That's kind of what he's known for, right? Right. Uh, And and so what is this? uh, Did someone accuse him of getting raped by lions? Well, it's his own quote, but yeah, and, and, and Rob Leefield also was like the heartthrob comic artist in the '90s that had yeah. his own Levi's commercial. Yeah, that's right. right. He had wow. his own Levi's commercial. Had his own Levi's commercial, and, and yeah, terrible, terrible artist, no. god awful artist. You know what? You know what? Don't lie. Do not lie. You know, you and everybody else who's all criticizing him. Y'all used to love him back in the early when 80s. he first cool. started. And I like, mean, early, it was I mean late late eighties, early nineties. Yes, but when, yes, when, when Jim Lee was hot and him and well, Mark well, Silvestri, I a, I whatever. A, well, they all you know they all tore apart and formed Image, but Lee, Liefeld, Leefield, <laughs> yeah, you know, he was. He was actually the, and I guess because I read a lot of X Men back then, he was the one that. I mean, he came before Jim Lee. He got popular before Jim Lee. I would go on the record and say he got popular before Todd McFarlane did on oh. Spider Man. Wow. Because um, his big claim to fame back then was Shatterstar, right? <laughs> who? Rob Liefeld. Didn't he <laughs> so who are we Shatterstar? talking about? 
No, he created, I mean, his big claim to fame well, was Deadpool. I yeah, mean, he Deadpool, created yes. Deadpool, right. But, but if you're looking wise, for, like, yeah. the Lee Field style uh, art, it, well, it was... was cable. I was, the Cable sums up the Lee Field. I mean, he created Cable. I mean, and Cable had all the big pouches. He had the big gun. He had the, you know, the receding... Teeny tiny feet. I mean, and little bitty know, feet carrying it all. And, but, I mean... It just kills me. I mean, the dude like rose to, to the fame, and everybody loved him. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, everybody shit on him. But I will say, well, uh, but I will say that when he went into like Heroes Are Born and came back to Marvel to work in '96, got paid. What I learned, he got paid three million dollars to do that. Wow. So Marvel paid him and Jim Lee each three million dollars to come back, and he was to do. He says he was only contracted to do six. I believe he was contracted to do 12. But No, yeah, he was a full 12. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is he kept getting – the Captain America book kept getting later and later, and they finally pulled him off of it. But, like, but, the quality – like, like you, you've got that famous cover oh, where his yeah. chest comes out a good 8, eight <laughs> to 12 inches under his uh, chin like a shelf. The quality was just – Terrible. Well, I mean, it's because he was on a monthly book again, right? And he and he he couldn't get the stuff out in time, so he was just throwing shit at a wall, and then people started like hating it. And I yeah. think once that cover hit, Marvel started like sending him stuff back and rejecting pages, and then it, that's when it was like it all. It, so by issue issue six, he was off the book, wow. right? You know? And you know what kills me? I mean, and you'd have to listen to his, his podcast. It's it's actually a very interesting podcast, especially if you're in the comic books and you were, you know, in the nineties in his heyday and images heyday. But I just remember, do you remember what he did after he got fired from, uh, I don't know if he got fired or whatever from the captain America, what he did with those pages that he had already done. Oh, yeah. He, he, he released him as fighting American. Right. He didn't go, he didn't create it. He went to the widow of the guy <laughs> who created fighting America and asked for the rights and bought the rights to him. Then he just repurposed, Captain America. They kind of reskinned them, right? Penciling, yeah, <laughs> the pencilers, and he inked them to look like this new character. Even this new character had a sidekick, just like Captain America did in in that Heroes Are Born stuff. Yeah, you know, it was absolutely bizarre what he did in that. But yeah. We care. <laughs> Bringing it back. Yeah, uh, so get us back to the Sahara uh, Desert or wherever. So, was. yeah, this is his quote. Apparently, he was quoted as saying to someone, he could have been raped by a pride of lions. Ah. And that became, he did get ra- raped by a pride of lions. So, on his podcast, apparently, he went on a tirade earlier this week, and this is the quote I could have been raped by a pride of lions, you know, in the Serengeti while I was walking naked. It could have happened, but it didn't. Because it because it didn't okay, like he's having to clarify <laughs> that he was not. He's having to go way out of his way to clarify that he was not fucked by a lion. I think he's protesting too much here. I, yeah, <laughs> I think so. I, I want to get the lions uh, lions yeah, take exactly. on this. Yeah, notice we don't have that. Uh, well, yeah. good. Well, I'm glad he's clarified that a little bit. And, and, just, and PMR, do you, do you want to plug his podcast here to maybe give him a few more listeners? Yeah, um, absolutely. It's a good podcast. Uh, Robservations is the name of it. Robservations. Uh, yeah, apparently he's been doing it for a couple of years now. And uh, <laughs> I don't. It's as long pretty, as us. Uh, <laughs> not many, as long as. How us. many listeners does he have? I wonder. Oh my god, he's probably got you know, twelve, 20. fourteen, yeah, twenty. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't want to listen to about comic books in the nineties? <laughs> 54-year-old men, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs to watch their heart? Cholesterol. Um, uh, what What else is going on? We got Rob Leefield. Uh, what's going on in the, uh, the DC world? I guess uh, James Gunn and Pete Safran, or whatever his name is, they're supposed to release their plan pretty soon. Have yeah, we, we're supposed to be getting their plan. Have we even um, talked about uh, the the life and death of uh, Henry Cavill already? Did we already do, do that? But, I don't think we did. But I yeah, the remember, yeah. the rocks. Well, I mean, that's it's just interesting. The uh, the rock is is basically shot himself in the foot. So you went from 
you know, uh, all of this seven years of trying to get Black Adam made. He finally gets it made. He has this horrible take on the character, right? He doesn't want anything to do with Shazam, even though his production company is the production company for the Shazam movie. For whatever reason, he feels like that's a slight to him. He's the only right. person that should be on his level is, uh, you know, uh, Superman. Superman, right? He apparently went behind the scenes, set up all of this stuff um, behind Walter Hamada's back to bring Henry Cavill back in, right? And pissed everybody and their brothers off, and then the movie bombed. <laughs> and so now The Rock's out. Like, he's not yeah. getting there. They're not making another Black Adam movie. That It's done. That universe he was trying to create is completely, yeah. you know, scuttled. And Henry Cavill's been thrown out with the bathwater. Yeah. So well, you know what? And I'm so sick. I'm so sick of hearing people, you know, fire James Gunn. You know, saves Henry Cavill. You know, everybody was sick of the Scott, uh, Zack Snyder stuff. Back. I mean, everybody bitched about it, bitched about, bitched about it. And now you would think, you know. We're trying to get rid of, Ke- you know, we're trying to save Kevin Feige. I mean, you know, it's just, it was horrible shit. And he needs to be gone. Henry Cavill needs to be gone. They need to start it fresh, start it from the beginning again. And I, if anybody can do it, it's James Gunn. James right. Gunn will be able to, to get this universe back on track that it needs. I mean, we've already had this, you know, the Henry Cavill stuff, Superman, it's done and gone. You yeah. know, let's... You know, you enjoy what we had. I didn't. It sucked. But Men of Steel, best best superhero well, movie come around. Now Batman, the new thing. Batman, Superman sucked. JLA sucked. I mean, it all sucked. Now the new thing that I keep getting hit up for is um, there's petitions uh, wanting DC to uh, license the Snyderverse to Netflix. I saw for, that. that. For Netflix yeah, to continue the Snyderverse. <laughs> <sighs> and then people just bitch nerds. About it. Well, well, I mean, well, yeah, that's why people hate nerds because yeah. they're all a bunch of fucking, you know, just a bunch of the ass. pain. They're pain in the asses. Nerds are pain in the fucking asses. Just, just be happy that we're getting stuff. We're going to be getting a new, right? You know, revamp to uh, DC universe. Let's let's just go with it. Let's enjoy what we got. Well, and I think what we're gonna we're gonna get the full court press because he keeps teasing stuff. Like he's teased what he's doing. What James Gunn is doing is he's teasing the stuff he's reading. So like he'll show he'll take a photo and it'll be his coffee table and he's got Dark Knight Returns on his coffee table, right? right. Or he's got um, uh, Metal Man, Batman, yeah. Batman Beyond. Right. So uh, so we're getting they're teasing. They've, the only thing they really said is they want a younger Superman. Right. Um, but it seems like we're going to quickly get into that that deeper cut uh, of, of D.C. instead of which we always said, like, it's like, why do we have to always start with an origin story? Like everybody knows Batman's origin. If you don't, there's there's five different movies then cover it for you. Right. Like jump, right. start with year two, right? Start with year two. And that's basically what they did with this last Batman movie. Right. So, uh, but it seems like we may be getting quickly into other aspects, uh, like metal men or like, uh, uh, Legion of superheroes, Batman beyond, uh, those type of properties that are really, it's the silver age stuff. Like DC has not really, touched on the silver age stuff they went they go from the uh you know back in the day uh batman superman wonder woman and then they jump to the then they try and jump to the stuff from like the 90s but there's a lot of stuff from the 60s 70s and 80s a lot of characters that were huge in that time period that dc doesn't do anything with and honestly those are the characters that marvel has built the mcu on is those stories and those characters so, you know, Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, you know, uh, like those type of characters um, that, that they don't have to be tethered to all this other stuff. They don't have to be Batman. They don't have to be Batman family to have a good movie. Right. So, uh, look at what James Gunn did with Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, that wasn't even, you know, the true Guardians of the Galaxy in the comic books. He, 
He actually just took a hodgepodge of characters, you know, third tier characters from Marvel, threw them together in a group, and and look look at what he did. I mean, it's, well, he took he's the, gonna do the same thing with the he's gonna do the same thing with DC. He's gonna do he that. took the Annihilation story arc and, and and used those characters because that's where they really said, you know, Star Lord, Drax, Gamora, you know, as as uh, Rocket and and Groot. So, you know, he took those as because uh, that was a popular story right about the time hmm. he was he was he, yeah, uh, he took a bunch of but there was a bunch of they weren't all together as the group Guardians of the Galaxy. They were all in that annihilation. And there was along with about, you know, 10 other cosmic characters. Yeah. Moon Dragon Cosmo was in it. Nova yeah. and uh, Adam Warlock. So, yeah. So he actually did. He took a bunch of them and and uh, I mean, he picked out from that bunch and pulled this together. And I think that's what he's going to do with DC and it's going to be a, a, a stronger thing than Zack Snyder ever. Yeah, did. Zack Snyder, he started off wrong. He, what he tried to do was they were just coming out of the dark Knight returns and the, you know, that gritty realistic, you know, DC universe of, um, what is it? Nolan? Yeah. Christopher Nolan. What's that face? And, and he tried, and he tried to do it, and he just he tried to keep it in that tone, and it just didn't work. Marvel was doing, going back to a more lighter tone, and that's what works, and that's what really works for Superman anyway. You you can't you can't have a dark and gritty Superman, not not to start off with. I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> well, no, let's start not. over, PMR. Yeah, do not, do not start over. <laughs> Your GPS was hanging with you, but she missed some of the finer points of what you were oh, saying. Oh man! So anyway, that's uh, yeah. I'm I'm glad Zack Snyder's gone. It's time to move <clears> on. <throat> so, uh, yeah. So we'll yeah. see what happens there. I enjoyed all of uh, all the Snyder stuff. Um, and it's it's unfortunate. I think everybody liked Wonder Woman and Batman. People finally came to love Ben Affleck as Batman for the most part, and Henry Cavill. So everybody likes those actors. But now it's like, well, yeah, that was ten years. It was like ten years ago. You can't start something yeah. fresh with these old farts. So you you yeah. gotta have something new, no matter if people love them or not. It's like, yeah, it's just what you got to do. Which leaves you know Henry Cavill up for uh, potentially 007. Did you guys see the uh, the thing I posted on uh, the Instagram page? I heard it from one of our our fans. My wife told oh. me about it. Yeah. What did she say? Uh, she said that oh I saw that uh, the new the Hemsworth guy is the uh, new James Bond, and she was going to make a joke about which one's the ugly one or something like that. But I don't think well, she, she did. That's my joke. So you didn't see the post. So no, let's see. George Lazenby <laughs> was quoted. George Lazenby was quoted earlier this week that um, uh, he wants he endorses Liam Hemsworth to be the new 007. So I posted okay. on our Facebook feed or on our I'm sorry on our Instagram. You know, breaking news: ugliest Bond endorses ugliest Hemsworth, Hemsworth for 007. So <laughs> well, there you go. All right. <laughs> I don't well, think he was the ugliest Bond. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. I don't know. Timothy Dalton is. Uh, have you seen George Lazenby? Well, I mean, lately, but George Lazenby back in the day, I mean, was better looking than Tim but Timothy Dalton when he took over as Bond. I don't know. I don't think so. I see your I, I see your Modoc quote. I see your Modoc post there. I'm going. It has one like. You know what? I'm going to give it another right now. Thank you. you Thank go. you for that. <laughs> So we got. To, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. The Gimsworth thing only has two likes, including mine. And my wife didn't yeah. even like it. She saw yeah, it. What the hell? She read it. She didn't even <laughs> like it. She read it. She read it. Saw was the joke. Was going to make a like joke. Of, yeah. Mm. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's going to be some more. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a, some talking to when I get off the podcast here. Yeah. All right. Well, but yeah, that's right. another little little tidbit. <laughs> Something interesting I also found. You know what you should do? Put on the uh, on the uh, 
Instagram account put on there about who's the uglier uh, James Bond. Who do you think? Yeah, well, yeah. she was making a joke about the uglier Hemsworth. She thought that you meant the the youngest one, the little one. No, he's not the youngest. I think he's the oldest. Oh, is he the little one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, okay. The little, the little fella. Little, little fella. Little okay. Hemsworth. Uh, it was like a new cartoon, Little Hemsworth. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't have little that. Bit, a little bit full, full circle with our image talk from earlier. Uh, the. Uh, and I posted this again on the Instagram feed, but uh, <laughs> I was looking through books, pricing stuff, and um, I got a Spawn number one and Peter Porker, the Spectacular Spider-Ham. Mm. And Peter Porker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, is like an $80 book now. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. I used to have like 20 of them. Spawn <laughs> number one is worth 30 bucks. So think about that, the world we live in now, that Spawn number one, a hugely sought-after book in the 90s, right, is worth less than half the first appearance of Spider-Ham. People love their Spider-Ham. That's got to be a real kick in the nuts for Todd McFarlane. <laughs> yeah, put that on Rob's observations. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Come Here's on, a good one for you, Lee Field. <laughs> anyway. So I thought that was interesting. <clears throat> what else we got? Other than the, the Ant Man trailer, any other news? Uh, I like the Ant Man trailer. I thought it was kind of. I thought it was busy. fine. I mean, I, I have to admit. I mean, they kind of, they make Kane look pretty cool. I thought <laughs> actually, I did like Kane. I thought Kane looked cool. And the uh, the the mask uh, is kind of a neat little thing to where now they can, you know, he's a comic accurate with a blue face, but it's really just part of his helmet or whatever type stuff that, of course, yeah. recedes back and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I thought that was cool. What about uh, the, the first appearance, the the revelation of Modok? Then there's two re- two appearances of Modok in the trailer. Yeah, have saw you guys that. seen? Yeah, PMR, have you seen it? Uh, one without a face, only yeah. one with the face and one in the shadows. Yeah, well, well, one, well, yeah, one's the, yeah, with the helmet down, the visor down. Um, and that's what we saw, like that I posted a while back where it's like, is he an android, right? He's not an android. That's, that's like a protective the helmet thing. Uh, but, uh, I didn't, I guess I didn't realize Corey Stoll, Yellow Jacket is playing Modoc. Yeah. You know, it kept being announced that he was coming back, but they never said what role he was playing. So we we knew he was coming back. We just we just figured he was going to come back, and he was back, you know, in the uh, quantum realm. But apparently, he is in the quantum realm. He's going to be Modok. So I don't know. Have you seen the photos of him without with uh, as Modok with his face? You know, where you can with the face reveal, just a big face. Well, yeah, he's just got that big old face. Mm-hmm. A little, little strange looking. A little strange looking. But I mean, that's Modoc, right? That is Modoc, but it does seem very like, uh, just like they superimposed the face there. <laughs> right. Like they didn't, they didn't do any sort of like smoothing or try to merge the CGI right. out of the face. It's like you know they 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 basically cut clutch cargoed his face onto <laughs> the uh, the CGI. It's it's it's. I'm sure that's not the way it'll look when the movie releases, but in the trailer, it's it's kind of jarring when you realize what what's happening in the background. So, but uh, man, what uh, what else do you think about the trailer, Pimar? Other than I just it was busy, just busy. just busy. I mean, it was like you know, it was like what the fuck's going on here? Yeah, you know? I don't know. Just <sighs> I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure, it'll be fine. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be fine when it comes out, but. I'm I'm a little disappointed greatest, you're not it, it didn't, you're not it excited really, about it. Yeah, just there was no moment in the trailer that I was like, oh wow. Except you know, I think the best well, you said it best, Brad. That King looked the best was cool looking. I think that yeah, that's that cool. moment at the end where he you know throws out bolts from his hand right. or whatever and it has an anger look on his face. Uh, you yeah, know, that was the coolest part of the trailer. The rest of the trailer was like meh. It was a meh. Wow. Moment. Okay. Did yeah. not get you excited, even though uh, it shows that, you know, uh, Scott's in, in jeopardy here. Maybe it's, they kill him off and let uh, the kid yeah, take over. Gonna, and They're not going to 
kill Paul Rudd off. I don't think Paul, how can you, you know, kill Paul he, Rudd off? How well, you, how do you paralyze him? Hmm? You really, you let a uh, a snowplow run a over snow him. Blower? Right. That's my. That's what I was getting at. Like, how do you? Uh, the rumor was that that you know he either dies or he's paralyzed, and so Cassie has to take over, right, and become stature. But uh, yeah, with with the news of of uh, Jeremy Renner, how do you how do you make another MCU character mm. paralyzed? Yeah, that's yeah. tough. I think what you know, I mean. I think he'll lose his powers, or I think he'll just you know give up the superhero life or something. I just don't, I just don't see them killing Paul Rudd. Yeah, lovable. He's too lovable. Lovable scamp that he is. Too lovable. You no, know? yeah, you know. Okay. Uh, there was something later this week, or, or late this week, they announced that uh, apparently David uh, Dasmalchian. Oh yeah. Is is returning for Ant Man three. But he's not playing the character he's been in the last two movies, because you know he was one of the uh, uh, the ex cons that worked at, at uh, Scott's you know firm. He's playing some other character, which I mean, this guy like I don't know how this guy gets all the work he gets, but he's People all over the place. Yeah, he, he played uh, you know he played uh, uh, the polka dot man, right. but then he also played the. Um, the inmate that uh, helped Joker during his plan to try and kill um, Gordon right. in, in the Dark, Dark Knight, Knight Rises or the Dark Knight. Yep, he played Abracadabra on CW's Flash. Like he's all over the place he, with he's uh, a big nerd, DC and Marvel. So, but yeah, and now this will be his second part in the Marvel universe, and he's had three parts in the DC universe. Yeah, but I'm sure so, it's like some multiverse bullshit. Thing. You think he's going to be a multiverse guy? Yeah, because I think they'll just playing, say he's he a, different a different character. Well, if he was playing a different character in another Marvel movie, then I'd think okay. But I mean, it's the same Ant Man, and he, he was a major part of the last two Ant Man. So, right, yeah, it's it would be kind of weird for him just to show up as you know, oh, this is Bob, right? Now, you know. No, it could still. He could be voicing a CGI character, though. Yeah, he could be voicing then Bodoc. Then that doesn't count. I don't. I don't no. count, Brian. You know, it doesn't that. count. That's Brian, not acting. What did that's you think? Reading. Yeah, that's just reading. Uh, what did you think about the trailer, Brian? <laughs> I enjoyed it. I uh, the I, they explained more. I think because a lot of people had the same question I did because you know in the last trailer. Um, Kane keeps saying, like, I can give you more time. I can give you more time. And in this trailer, he's basically like, you lost time. I can give you that time back. Right. So so basically the, the time where he missed Cassie growing up. So that uh, that's a little bit more, you yeah. know, fleshed yeah. out. It makes more sense uh, than – because otherwise it's like, what, is he, like, terminally ill or something? Like Maybe. The, other, the other logic didn't seem to pan out, or uh, at least based off what we know. The um, it seems uh, it's. I'm worried there's going to be two. It's going to be the office season eight. You know, I'm worried it's going to be. Well, Janet's got to have her her stuff, right? And and Hank's got to have his stuff, and then and then Hope's got to have her stuff, and Cassie's got to have her stuff. You know, and you know, and it's going to be like Jesus Christ. Can we not just get back onto the story? Like you know, so it's. Because they're all going into the quantum realm together, so <laughs> right, right. you know it's like oh, Jesus Christ. Like, it, I would rather this more be more. I, I think what I feel like uh, the uh, watching the trailer, it kind of gave me the uh, uh, maybe reminiscent of uh, Flash Gordon. You know the uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Sam. Uh, oh man, uh, Rit- no, Rit- not Richardson. Richard, I don't know Sam. No. Oh my God. But uh, um, yeah, yeah. The uh, Max von Sydow, uh, Ming the Merciless, right? You know Timothy Dalton, uh, uh, yeah. um, the pirate the, guy, the yeah. Green Forest guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the um, ugly James Bond. The ugliest James <laughs> Bond. That's how he got his start. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to go, uh, uh, that's that's kind of the the gist I kind of felt like in this trailer, which is cool and all. But at the same time, Brian Blessed, 
Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, at the same time, it's like I want to see Scott and Hope like navigating this wild, you know, this wild dimension. Not necessarily. Okay. Well, now what's? Well, we got to check in on Jan. We got to check in on Hank. We gotta right. check, you know, it's like come on. Like I would rather it just be the two or three of them. And leave Janet and Hank, you know, yeah. uh, at home. So and just leave their asses at home. Leave those old asses at home. No one wants to see that. Uh, you know the uh, the other thing that uh, you know will be interesting to see if this movie changes <laughs> changes things in a little bit of the MCU as far as special effects go, uh, because it looks like it's going to be extremely special effects, green screen driven. And you know mm-hmm. we, we've we felt a lot of uh, problems with that in the past with uh, Love and Thunder and Doctor Strange Two and all that stuff to where it's like okay it's just it's getting uh, you know kind of the same thing as uh, the Star Wars prequels where everything's in front of a green screen and it just looks fake and it doesn't seem like they're putting that much effort into it. But that's what yeah, it appears some, like, right? Yeah, at some point, it's just an animated movie. They don't want to call it an animated movie, but it's just an animated movie. Right. You know, at some point, it's Song of the South or, or you know, Who uh, uh, Framed Roger Rabbit. Going back, way back. I mean, it's Pete's Dragon at some point. There like, it's, it's an animated movie. It's like bed knobs and broomsticks all yeah, over again. Bob Hoskins, <laughs> Bob Hoskins standing in the foreground. You know, it's, it's right. just you know, uh, uh, Ant Man instead of uh, Bob Hoskins. Yeah, it's so weird. Like it, it, it's weird with the way Hollywood feels about. It's like they don't feel like animation is cinema, but then everything we get movie wise for the past <laughs> twenty years has been CGI. Yeah. So it's like, well, which is it? it you know, I, yeah. I don't know it's. Frustrating. Yeah, that's uh, it's that's a concern because it's like at least with the Marvel universe, you care about the characters, right? The big problem with the the prequels is yeah, all the characters were like watching paint dry, right? So you didn't give a shit about the characters, and they they tell you right off the bat they're in a galaxy far far away, so it's meaningless to you, right? As as a a, a, a Terran, you know. Like, so, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, that reminds me. I, I did watch uh, Andor, finally. Oh, uh, how was that? I, I still haven't watched it. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. Here's here's what's missing out Andor. Brian, did you watch it? I watched like, the first four episodes. I have not finished it. It's it's a great it's got a good story because it kind of lays the foundation of how the, the rebels began and, you know, how it all kind of started, kind of lays the foundation for that. But all the characters are so drab. He's so drab. Everybody is just, you don't have no, you don't have a Han Solo. You don't, you have, don't a, have a Han Solo. You got to have, have a Han, Han Solo. Solo. You got a Hans, you got to have a Han Solo or a Fonzie. I mean, and you don't have that. It's just, it's just so dry. It's just hard to get through. I mean, it, but. But the part that's interesting, though, I mean, they could have cut it down to about five episodes or four episodes, really. But the part that's interesting is to see them laying the groundwork to the story that the character is just just not there. Man. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's interesting. You got to have one Han Solo, but you can't have two. No, no, you can't have two. That, that's called Tango and Cash, and we know how that <laughs> That's what I was about to say. That's the exact example I was about to give. You, you can't have a Tango and a Cash. You, you, no. you can have one Han, and then you got to you got to have the uh, Han's got to be the, pointing out all the absurdity of what you're seeing. Yep. You know, Han's got to be the cool guy that doesn't believe have, in in space yep. wizards, right? You know, yep. you got to have that. You got to have the Han Solo. You got to have the. You got to go to the cool guy. You got to have the guy that comes in and save the day and the kick ass. If I worked in Hollywood, like just as a as a, as a script, you know, uh, a script guy, that that'd be my one question: <laughs> Who's the Han? Exactly. It's so like you know, I've looked through thing. this. He Who's the Han? A, he should have had a a funny best friend. He, he should have had a a wacky best friend that's a, a, a you know. Whoop, 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 and he comes in safe and you know, but no. <laughs> Named Curly. Um, <laughs> speaking Named Balky. Of, <laughs> <laughs> Balky. Speaking of uh, 
Wow. You know, this is a real diatribe. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what episode. I did see something or another about uh, Impractical Jokers. Uh, you know, the, one of the, impractical, the four Impractical Jokers, one of the guys left, you know, a couple of years ago or whatever, and they've been having kind of replacement people guest starring on the show. Uh, they had Alf on the show. Did, hey. did you guys hear about this? Alf was an Impractical Joker for an episode. I don't know if it's aired right. or not. The puppet? Yes. Alf? Yes. That's so sad. <laughs> they said that the guy you that's the puppeteer did. for Al was like a pain in the ass. Like because <laughs> he, he wanted he wanted them to treat Alf as if he was one of the, the actors of right. the show. Like so if they would try to address him, he'd be like uh, he would act like he couldn't understand him or like 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 right. He wouldn't. We wouldn't respond unless they were talking to Al. You got to talk to the Al pop it first. You you know you're about to be canceled if your last season has got Al in it as a guest. I, I figured since we mentioned Balky, we would be talking about Al wow. here. I mean, uh, the writing is on the wall with these guys. Hey, uh, Denis. Speaking of animated uh, movies, uh, anybody see Avatar two? I did actually. That I did good. as well. You did. Oh wow! <laughs> Both of you. Wow. I actually, you know what? I talked shit about Avatar, and uh, I actually enjoyed the movie. I mean, I hate to say it because mm. I talked so much shit about it, but I enjoyed it. I this is it. this is a new PMR in 2023, Brian. I guess so. I it is know. a new PMR. It's a movie. Uh, I yeah, saw it as well. It it's. I have a. <sighs> I enjoyed the movie. <laughs> wow, this is tough. I enjoyed the movie. Right. But, uh, like, I, it, like, I don't feel like, I don't, if they don't make a third one, I don't care. Like, if, like, I'm not invested in this universe on any level, right? The, it, there's lots of stuff that's like, there's pr- lots of script plot problems with this movie. You, there's you lots- know what was, you know what was missing? Han Solo. Solo. A Han Solo. Really? It didn't have a Han Solo? They didn't have a Han. Really? They didn't really have a Han Solo. You gotta have a Han Solo. I'm telling you. They have a Han Solo. I I liked it. I I didn't think it was that. I I enjoyed it. I'm like you. I mean, if they didn't make another one, it's not like I'm going to be crying, but of course they're going to make another one. I enjoyed it much more than I thought I was going to. Uh, I mean, I I, I didn't really remember much about the first one. Kind of... Got dragged to see this one, and I was like, "Ah, oh, this ain't too bad." So. <laughs> well, uh, here's some of my gripes. They spent how much of the movie putting Stephen Lang back in play? You know, like Stephen Lang was not—he was okay in the first movie, but it wasn't like you know this is you know a, a, a De Niro level performance. This is you know <laughs> he, he wasn't putting. He wasn't putting in Godfather type work into that role, so it's like, wh- why did we have to spend so much money, so much of this movie putting him back in play? Hmm. My find- question, my question was, why were they so adamant about getting this guy back? You know, it was like, uh, yeah, that that's the biggest plot hole of all, right? Because they were like, they were going after Jake Sully because because they were basically attacking the uh, the uh, camps that were trying to get the. Now it's not unobtainium. I nope. guess I guess he took the note that, that that was completely asinine. So now the MacGuffin is not unobtainium. No, it's it? it's something. Oh, okay. It's something else. But uh, but yeah. So like the, they're attacking the you know they're, they're basically like guerrilla warfare <clears throat> against the corporation and, and like the the Earth camps and everything. But and so that's why they bring Scott uh, um, Stephen Lang back. I forget what his name is. Yeah. But it's like, why did you sink billions of dollars into like bringing him back as a as a Navi? Don't you? He got killed. He got like he lost. Like, like why are you giving this guy a second chance at it? Because like, he yeah. fought him before. Is that kind of why? Even though it made no I sense. I guess. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess. But he fought yeah, him and lost him before. Right, right. Right. I think it was more or less a nostalgic thing. Like you know, so people could remember this guy. I don't fucking know. Well, now Brian, Brian's talking before. about in the movie. Why did they bring him back? Right. Yeah. Why would uh, why would why would Earth like spend all these you know billions of dollars to clone and, and dump him into a an avatar body and then 
fly him back. It took ten years they, they, to bring him back to uh, um, Pandora to try to take out Jake Sully, and and then like they're just going after Jake Sully and his tribe in the clouds. And Jake Sully's argument is, well, they're going to keep coming after us, but they're they're after me. They're after me, so I'm just going to leave. And so he leaves, and sure enough, they stop. They stop attacking that that oh. Navi tribe. Uh, like, I guess that Navi tribe just stopped, you know, a- attacking the uh, the human encampment or whatever. And like, they just start. They spend all their resources chasing him across the ocean now. And it's like the the like. Why would you think if why would you think they would stop? The the humans would stop coming after this 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 tribe just to keep chasing Jake Sully across the ocean. It was weird. And then he shows up at this other tribe and they're like, no. You. So his logic is I'm putting my people in danger. I've got to leave. Let me go find another tribe that I can put in danger. Because sure yeah. enough. The new tribe finds out, or he finds out that he's with this ocean tribe, <laughs> he's and worst, so they just start killing them. He's the worst Navi ever. It's so biz- like th- there's. Uh, oh, well. Then you've got the whole. Did you hear this thing about um, people keep calling him space whales, and he gets and, <laughs> and James Cameron gets mad. What's no. he doing? <laughs> he doesn't want you calling him space whales. Uh, I don't forget <laughs> what they're actually called, but yeah, they're, they're space whales. And what and what they want is they want their like uh, cerebral fluid. That's the new MacGuffin. Is they ah. want these whales cerebral fluid? Okay, because it stops aging. Ah. if you can, if you can get it. But uh. this is weird too. They're like they 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 send these like aircraft, or these hovercraft boats after these whales. They're, they they have to go through all of these things because the whales are like armor plated. It's like they're half whale, half tortoise sort of thing. They have to go through all this stuff to kill this whale. Then they have to go in the whale and drill through its like you know uh, the the roof of its mouth like that, yeah. that the pan the pal- yeah. to get the the um uh, uh, cerebral fluid. And they go through so they go through all this stuff showing what they're doing. And they're like, he pulls it out and he goes, you see that right there? That's about $20 million. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This this movie's got to be set 100 or 200 years in the future. Right. Right? Like, <laughs> the, they flew across space to get to this planet to hunt this whale to get that cerebral fluid and they only, only get profit million, like twenty million, huh? $20 million. <laughs> right. in, in two hundred years, twenty million dollars is going to be like thirty grand. <laughs> they could have sold a, sold a couple of shares of their IPO. <laughs> that would have been fun. <laughs> like, that always gets me is when like the dollars are way like clearly whoever wrote the script has no clue how money works <laughs> or inflation or anything else. Yeah, they could have said like, twenty yeah. twenty centons, and you would have been like, okay, yeah. that makes sense. That that seems yeah. about twenty centons worth. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> twenty parsecs. But, what, but yeah, like that like, right there is about twenty million dollars. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I'm like Doctor Evil. Man, it sounds like a lot now. Uh, that doesn't even sound like a lot now. <laughs> right. You think they spent for a company, on this movie. right? For a <laughs> right, <laughs> they spent <laughs> they spent well over twenty million dollars on the marketing. <laughs> They spent twenty. Yeah, they spent twenty million dollars <laughs> on the, the container that they, uh, they made. <laughs> right. The it's so, oh, so weird. Like that's the kind of stuff you got in this movie. And of course, they don't have now. They have the the Ekron, the the dragon things that now they they don't fly. They hydrofoil, so they got to keep their tail in the water while they kind of fly above the water. Oh, okay. So it's like, but they had. Ekron that could fly. So if you weren't tethered to the water, it seems that would be a tactical advantage when you're going thing. up against boats, right? You're going against boats. No. No. Oh, we don't need them. It feels well, exhausting. I liked it. I liked it. It was decent. It was a good movie. Yeah. I, I, would, I, 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 I heard I visually didn't. fantastic storyline is, yeah, like you're I mean, saying. Rubbish. But, you know, but to your point earlier, Brian, uh, we were, I don't know what y'all are talking about, but like 
No one knows. They, and I, it's gotten to a point where it's like you're watching a Pixar movie with these things. I mean, it's, I mean, it could have, I don't know, it just didn't seem, you might as well just be watching a cartoon. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, this movie, and you know, at least last movie, you had the lab. They kept going back to the lab, and it was all humans. Right. right. This movie, you know, like, what uh, the good guys are Navi, the bad guys are Navi. Yeah. The only the only people that you see that are not Navi is the guy piloting that hovercraft thing, and Jermaine Clement, who is in the movie for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why Jermaine Clement's in the movie, but he's there. Was he the Han Solo character? Or no, he release. was the the guy that was uh, begrudgingly killing the whales, but mm. uh, you know uh, had ethical. It was it realized it was an ethical quandary. Oh, okay, all right. So, all right. well, that's. I'll see it when it comes out on streaming. Maybe it feels like it's, a well, it's, it's 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 decent. It's nothing. It's it's enjoyable. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. But well, yeah. and and watching the movie, I kept thinking about PMRs. You know uh, his rating system. Mm-hmm. Like it's, I was able to get through one viewing of it. Yeah, right. I don't feel like there's ever a scenario where I could sit yeah. through that movie again. Yeah, I don't. Th- I think you're right. Well, I can never sit through the first one again. So, so yeah, I think you're right. I, this would be a, definitely a three for me. Okay. So, Brian, <clears throat> what do you give it? A three. I'll give it a I'll give it a three. Okay, begrudgingly, begrudgingly, <laughs> begrudgingly steal the wells uh, f- uh, fluid from their brain. Cerebral fluid, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, that's good. Um, so. well, similarly, uh, special effects uh, heavy movie that I saw yesterday, uh, Shin Ultraman. Have you guys seen that mm-hmm. one? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Uh, it's Ultraman. It's uh, it's, 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 a, it's a new Ultra- uh, it's a new Ultraman movie, right? It's a new Ultraman movie. I forgot the director's name, but he was the same guy who directed Shin Godzilla, uh, which was a great movie. Uh, is his name Shin? Is his name, name is Shin? Shin? What's that? Oh. Is his name Shin? His name is Shin. And uh, no, it was. Uh, I mean, I, my I, my two sons went with me. No, to make me not feel too pervy. Uh, but no, it was uh, it was an okay movie. There was a lot of homages to the, as they say, to the original uh, Ultraman TV show and Ultra Q TV show from the 1960s. They kept the design mainly the same and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but everything was computer generated uh, as opposed to a man in suit. But it was computer generated to make it look like a man in suit. So that was kind of neat. Um, so there you go. Yeah. I give it a solid three as well. Actually, it may be a little bit more because I think I would watch it again because there was it was uh, some bizarre stuff happening in it uh, that I, I probably would watch it again if I had a chance. So there you go. Well, there I you think go. Shin Ultraman beat out Avatar 2. I'm sure it probably did. Uh, I'm certain of that. What else? I also went and saw Megan. Oh, how was that? Oh, how was that? PMR, uh, this movie is kind of made for PMR. Uh, a robot that goes out of control? A robot that goes out of control? A robot uh, that there's a robot fight at the end? Wow. What? Uh, although the robot she fights does not have a face. <laughs> it, you know, then it's not a so, robot. But it, is, but it was a robot. The, uh, you know, it, the Chucky... Comparisons aside, right? This one's at least more plausible. Okay, it, slightly more plausible. Slightly more plausible, right? So the uh, the whole idea is they they're creating this. Um, they want to they basically want a Teddy Ruxpin, right? They want that Teddy Ruxpin experience right. where where it's like you know the the child talks to the the animal or whatever or the doll, and the doll talks back. Well, they create like an algorithm so that the 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 doll will study speech patterns and slowly but surely like give better responses, more, right. more uh, basically understand the conversation. I mean, they don't realize that's what they're doing, but they're creating it where this this 
this computer chip that's powering the doll can can learn a, learn the language and learn how to have conversations. Well, you can't have that without making the doll essentially, you know, artificially intelligent, right? Yeah. And so, you know, you had that whole thing where Google launched that artificial intelligence, that story writer thing, um, like three or four years ago. And like within just a few, with just a few hours, it started like writing like Nazi esque propaganda, (laughs) right? Y'all remember this, right? I do remember that. And so, and so, basically, I mean, that's that's kind of plausible. uh, That that that's that's where you know that's why it's not like they programmed it to be art, you know, to be autonomous, and but they they created this language program that by default made it. You know, uh, um, and uh, artificially intelligent. So that was pretty. That was pretty interesting. A part of it, like a way to get into it without. You know, it's you know, it's a uh, um, a death row inmate that's escaped and he's, you know, he's possessing a doll. Um, so you kind of had that. You had you got into some psychology stuff about like the kid because the parents, the, the the basically the girl's daughters or the girl's parents die. And she's living with her aunt. Her aunt basically wants the doll to just raise her, right? So, so the the child who's gone through this traumatic thing starts to imprint on the doll instead of like her aunt, who is her true guardian. So, like you get into this weird like sort of dynamic there, and it asks some you know ethical questions there, which are pretty interesting. When it gets to the final like you know bloodbath stuff. The killing spree stuff. There are some things that don't make any sense there, but it's uh, it's pretty enjoyable and did really well at the box office. They've already greenlit a second movie. So oh, really, wow, yeah. So I think uh, I think you'd enjoy it. Well, if it, if it comes to a streaming service, I'm there you go, it. coming to a streaming service near you. So, Brad, have you uh, any desire to see Megan? Uh, yeah, I, I would probably see it on a streaming service. Actually, last night when we got, when we got out of Shin Ultraman, um, it, it was like we walked, like we accidentally, uh, which we may have, uh, we accidentally fell asleep in the store and then woke up and the store was locked up. Was like, we got out at 9 o'clock last night, which on a Wednesday night, 9 o'clock, I don't, doesn't seem too late to go see a movie, right? But everything sure. was closed up, like the concession. Everything was dark. There was one person in the lobby that worked there. And I, afterward, and I, I was so, you know, bewildered by why, why everything felt like we just got out of Rocky Horror or something like that at midnight. Uh, that afterwards, I, when we got in the car, I'm like, shit, we could have snuck into Megan and gone see Megan right afterwards. Sure. Because there was like, literally, there was one person in charge of the whole theater, I think. So, so I would see it then, yeah. but... Uh, I did watch last night I, uh, afterwards. I did uh, come home and watch The Menu on HBO ah, Max. I saw The Menu as well. That yeah, was fine. I mean, nothing. It's fine. Yeah. Don't tell me about it. I'm, I'd like to see it. Is it a suspense <sighs> movie or is it just kind of one of these stupid, you know. It's not really suspense. No, nah, it's not it's, really horror. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. Kind of pointless. It's Eat the Rich. I mean, it's basically classism. Uh, you know, eat the rich uh, servants versus so, uh, servants and artistic types versus consumers, creators versus consumers. Yeah. So it was good. It's yeah. worth a watch. Yeah. Speaking of Megan, though, Brad, have you ever, uh, and I, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but uh, have you ever uh, heard of Asimov's Three Rules for Robotics? Uh. <laughs> yes, why well, I, uh, I can't quote them, but I'm aware of them. PMR, are you aware of Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics? He should know. No, them. what are they? No, All right, so not. Isaac Asimov, who was a sci-fi writer, right, and a lot of what we kind of like what we use for fiction around robots and stuff is from some of his short stories and everything, right? And Will Smith um, movies, but the Will Smith movies, I, I Robot, right? Oh yeah. Um, so, but Asimov's three laws of robotics, uh, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction, allow a human being to come to any harm. That's rule okay. one. Uh, rule two, 
a robot must obey orders given to it by a human, uh, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. So, so it must obey a human unless the human's giving it an order that would injure another human or allow a human to come to harm. Okay. And three, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Right. Thoughts? Okay, what was that last one? All right, so they they stack on each other. So the first one is a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. The second one, a robot must obey orders given to it by a human being except where such orders would conflict with the first law, injuring a human or causing or, or inaction causing a human to be injured. And the third law is a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. So basically, protect humans, obey humans, protect yourself. If you're protecting yourself, it's fine as long as it's not going to endanger a human. If you're a robot, okay. if you're if you're obeying a human, you obey the human unless it would cause harm to a human. So protect humans, obey humans, protect yourself as a robot. Thoughts? He's thinking about it. He's thinking about where the uh, all robots must have a face, an adorable face. Yeah. Yeah, that must be number four. 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 Robots must have a distinctive eye and nose. <laughs> okay, and I mouth. was wondering when that, you know. <laughs> Yeah, where's that fall in this? <laughs> they don't have to. Have, uh, yeah. Pool of robotics. It's pretty interesting, though. Yeah. Pretty well thought out I for like something that. that's yeah. science fiction. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so. Be- better than the unobtainium. More thought out. Asimov, <laughs> than Asimov put some thought into his, sh- his uh, Will Smith <laughs> movies. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. That's what it is. I, yeah, I realized we had uh, never talked about it. So. We do need uh, to get robots, servants, and stuff. We were promised those as child children that we would. Oh, we have, have them. I mean, you don't think the uh, the flying ring yeah. drone is a robot? I mean, it'll alert you when yeah. somebody's breaking into your house or whatever. So, so there was a video earlier today. We kind of alluded to it, but there's ring. The ring camera company has created a basically a ring camera. On a uh, drone um, fan, you know, uh, um, rig where it will kind of like a Roomba fly at like chest height through your house in sentry mode looking for things. Well, what the fuck? It's, I mean, what's it going to find? I mean, if someone breaks in your house, they're just going to. Either steal it or just knock it down. Just swat it out of the air. Yeah, I mean, what the, what, the what if what if you're not sure if you left the the stove on? Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah. Roomba ain't going to tell you. Roomba what can't if, get that high. <laughs> what if you're worried the dog is digging a hole in the couch? Yeah, right. Then like back, should, so then you should fucking put the dog down or stay home. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Ouch. And get a robot dog. Get one of those little Asimo or whatever exactly. what, uh, that was named after. Dog. Yeah, exactly. Asimo. Yeah. yeah. Named, after, named after Asimo. Um, I don't well, know. Like I said, I, I think if you could use it in a warehouse where it's high enough and it just that no one can get to it and it just goes around the warehouse, All right. I think that would be a good application for it. But I don't believe a house. I think that's kind of. Right. But like. We don't. You don't just go from no robots <laughs> right. to C three PO. Like Why not? There's, there's a trajectory not. here, right? So, so if I feel they like can law, we we got off the path of the trajectory. That you know we should have already had the C three PO by now. Well, Who's here's the boys? thing. Here's the thing. With drone technology like it is, would you rather have something that? that would you rather build a, a robot that? has joints and actuators and can, can support its own weight and balance and not fall and all that kind of stuff you got to do yeah. uh, to make it a robot? Or would you rather create something that, that has lift uh, uh, and can project, can, uh, and you keep the weight down, 
using small components uh, to so you don't have to do all that other stuff. All that that all that hardware, all that mechanical stuff can be left out. You just get your weight down and you put it on a prop fan, essentially. Right. The which, first thing. The which, first. I mean, sounds a lot like Vincent to me, Brad. I know, I mean, yeah. But, Why would you not want to love? But, you know, Vincent had eyes and uh, old Bob had sad <laughs> eyes. But they were hovering <laughs> flying <laughs> robots. <laughs> Vincent did. I forgot about Vincent. You're right. Uh, so let, let me ask you this: If we took that ring robot and put two googly eyes yeah. on it, and like it's a win, I would and, and, and a pair of wax lips and a British accent, yeah, ah, yeah. a monocle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that I, I I do agree with PMR that for the normal home user that feels a little bit uh, a little bit too much. I mean uh, you know especially when you know the you know some of the conspiracy theorists they oh well Roomba's just mapping out your house and all this kind of stuff. A flying robot is <laughs> totally mapping out your house. And seeing what's on your shelf, seeing what appliances you have, and making notes, and like, oh, do you need to replace? You got to replace the water filter or whatever type stuff. Where, in some way, that's convenient, uh, but in other ways, it feels like it's a little bit too intrusive for my robots. But here's the thing: if you took that robot, right? You yeah. took that robot and gave it a different shell. Yeah. Yeah. With eyes, with a face, right. he would seem and, helpful. And even then. if they're faux arms that don't work, right? Like Sir Galaxy is in. I mean, you could literally use the. You could put a fake lens, and then the real camera lens. But two, that's two two eyes right there. I mean, I don't know why people don't do that. Yeah, now you just need a nose and, and mouth. Yeah, you're good. Done. What did I send you that uh, I saw Sir Galaxy in the background of something? What the hell was that? I forgot what that was. But You had a Sir Galaxy, Brad. Yeah, and you do now, somehow or another. A broken one, right? Yeah, I've got an old broken one. Is it mine? <laughs> did I loan it to you? Because <laughs> it, it kind of feels like it would not be unheard of. If you borrowed no, you, you've got something your, of mine and broke it and just kept it. You've got huh? your Sir Galaxy. I have you no idea. You sent a picture of it a few weeks ago. No, that you was the little wind-up uh, Tommy uh, robot. No, you had a picture of Sir the Galaxy and yeah. all that crap. You had a picture of Sir Galaxy and all your stuff. I don't think Which so. Brad, that little, that little wind-up Tommy robot, I can think it goes for like 30 bucks now. He's not in great condition, but $10. Sure. I'll let it go for $10 maybe. <laughs> No, no, you had uh, the Sir Galaxy, Brad. You had it in your box. You had it because I made mention of how good it looked. No, <laughs> maybe <laughs> he, he thought you were talking about something else. Yeah, I know. No, I think that was maybe the I do have your Starbird. Zergalis. I don't know. I think that was. Starbird. It was a de- it, it, oh man, I want that Starbird, Brad. You know what I saw the other day was the Starbird um, uh, cardboard moon base. Yeah, cardboard. I got moon that. Oh, I've actually got cool. that. You want to start? Uh, Kenny Wellen bought it for <laughs> Kenny Wellen bought it for me. It's uh, it's kind of uh, it's not in great shape, but it's pretty cool. I had one. This one was new in box. Wow! It oh, was wow. the Go Go's documentary, Brad. Is what you'd say? Oh, okay. Uh, the Go Go's. Thank you. A pretty good documentary. I'll tell you the uh, other. That's right. The other toys I'm I'm, I'm trying to get uh, get because this is a finite set. This will be your wife is home. Yeah, yeah she's I home. Hear the dog. Uh, I'm finite set, Brad, but do you remember the Universal Mini Monsters by Remco? That doesn't sound familiar. 1980? 1980? There you go. All right, that doesn't sound too familiar. Uh, PMR, you know, because you had a Starbird as well, right? Or I, five. I, had the star, I, I had the Starbird, I had the... Uh, I had the moon base, and and I had the. Uh, you remember it was the. Yeah, when I was up in Atlanta uh, over the holidays, I. Uh, they made the Intrepid. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, but I went to go see our friends at Second Chance Toys in uh, Kennesaw. Oh, Georgia. okay, all right. And you decided you wanted to collect some some Universal monsters. The Universal monsters. Okay. I, yeah, that's probably the oldest toy I remember owning was those. Oh wow! So. <laughs> that's what started it all. Started it all. Wow. Universal Monsters. Pretty good. 
So, you know, speaking, also got, I was going to say, speaking okay. of toys and um, uh, Super 7, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be a more, I think, is trying to call in here. Hold on. Um, why is he? Uh, he's call. He's like calling over the phone. Um, I pre-ordered uh, Godzilla versus Biolante, uh, you know, special expensive figure yeah. from Super Seven, uh, like a year and a half ago, and it's still kind of, uh, you know, they're they're refining the mold of it or whatever. It's still you know available, or it's. I mean, it's not available to purchase. They closed out the orders and everything. Uh, but they still haven't released it yet. And I'm like, ah, at this point, uh, I don't think uh, I don't think I want to buy anything from them. You know? Yeah, they, their their window is really long. Well, yeah. and this is concerning. They were going to do a two pack. It's wrestlers, but they were going to do. They just uh, they were going to do a two pack of um, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, which they're back in the WWE now. But for a while, they were in, like, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Right. And Super 7 was going to do a figure of them. And those things have been, like, you, like just like this. They've been out there. The pre-orders of those was a, oh, well over a year ago. Yeah. And they just announced, like, yesterday that due to manufacturing issues, uh, they will not be releasing them. Oh, really? That's yeah. kind of disappointing. So, but you don't know if it's because, like, they're – I kind of took it as because they're back in WWE, they've lost their window uh, they, yeah. to put them on the market, but maybe not. Um, I've been getting the Thundercats stuff from Super 7, yep. and uh, I just got the newest one today, and um, it's the, the, the Space Cop. I forget her name, but the head sculpt, the plastic in the head sculpt does not look right. Oh, it really? looks like a China doll kind of, it's not flesh toned. It's like China doll looking. And it's like, Holy shit. What is going on with this figure? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on with super seven. It doesn't. The, so. uh, yeah. That's it's disappointing. Cause they got a lot of good stuff there, but uh, I don't know what, uh, what's going on there. Uh, we're trying to get, as we were talking about our toy collection here, we're trying to get Alex and PMR back here. Up here. Uh, we're here. Alex, there he is. Happy I'm birthday, here. Podman! Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm a, I'm a solid thirty five years old. <laughs> All You're right, twenties now, son. What? You're officially in your twenties, not just. You're officially in it. I'm. I, I thought I was in it after twenty. I think when you turn twenty, you're in your twenties. <laughs> Oh, no, like Alex. PMR's well. logic spoken like a true, yeah. <laughs> a, no. a true, yeah. But give him the rules, PMR. Explain this to him, because clearly he's not getting it. What part? Uh, well, well, now the fact that now he's in his twenties. I mean, I get it, and Brad gets it. I'm sure the lister gets it. But explain to Alex the difference in 21 and 22. Well, 21, you're just still like. 20 years old, and then when you're 23, you're in your 20s. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wait, sure, when, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're 23, you're in your 20s? Is that? Yeah, 20, you're in your 20s. Okay. But I'm 24, you're in your 20s. pre-30s. But didn't you, didn't you just turn 21, or 22, rather? I just, just turned 22, so I guess I'm not in my 20s. You're not in your 20s. No, no, no now you are, and Alex. I, now you're officially in no. your 20s. No, you're tw- really? when you're 23... Yeah. Yeah. PMR said it's not until 23. I'm in my 20s. Yeah. No, 22. You're in 22. You're good. I thought he meant 20. 20 doesn't count. Like 21, you're still shaking off 19. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, regardless, <laughs> happy birthday, uh, young pod man. Uh, we're Thank we're you. thrilled that you're celebrating your birthday with us and the listener. You know, I thought I thought I could spare some time. You know, I feel like I had some spare time just to to just talk about things that I don't know what we're talking about, but I could say something. We, well, join the club. We don't. It's know been what a we're tough talking. episode. I mean, there's been a lot of movies that have come out. What have you not talked about? A lot. I talked about Megan. You seen yes. Megan yet? Alex? I'm going. I'm going tomorrow night to see Megan. It's uh, it's pretty good. It's uh, that's what I heard. 
it's kind of interesting the way they get into why she's like self aware. So I, it's uh, and, 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 and pretty and interesting. I saw Shin Ultraman. Alex, I don't know you? what the hell. God I don't know what it. that is. <laughs> okay. Me and Zach. Anyway. anyway. What, what did, we saw Avatar. I did. I also saw Avatar. Okay. I've seen Avatar. All right. Well, tell, seen, it, saw, tell us something that we have not seen. So give us a uh, surprise. Something that we would not have seen that you have, Alex. I saw Babylon by Damien Chazelle. Oh. All right. Damien Chazelle's latest little flick. It's pretty Which good. Okay. Bombed incredibly. It did. And what if if I learned anything from the movie, it's that when your success in Hollywood is over, you should kill yourself. So Ouch. I'm wondering whether Damien Chazelle is going to, you know, because he bombed. He's, it, it's pretty bad. He spent like $130 million on the movie, and it utterly tanked. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, The Rock knows so, how he kills. Is it just Margot Robbie that kills herself, or is it more people kill themselves? Margot Robbie doesn't kill herself. Spoiler. Oh, Brad Pitt does. Spoilers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brad Pitt. But here's the thing. Here's my pitch for Babylon it, it, to try to encourage you to go see it. If in the first five minutes of a movie you like the visual of an elephant shitting on a person, then you'll love Babylon. All right. If you like elephant shit, lots of it, then you'll love Babylon. Hmm. Okay. That's all I got for you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I saw an elephant's asshole poop. All right. Yeah. Nothing special about that. Okay, what else have you seen? Uh, I saw. I've seen Knives Out. Okay, I've seen that actually. I saw oh, yeah. well, glass. I saw Glass Onion. A Knives yeah. Out. Glass Onion. History. Yes. Oh glass man, he, don't say that. he hates that, Alex. If, Who if, does? Uh, uh, Ryan Johnson, he does not like the fact that it's yes. called a Knives Out mystery. He doesn't, and I get that. It's it's a stupid little tagline. It's ah, dumb. I like it. And it <laughs> makes it feel like it's in like it makes it feel like it's the same thing over again when it's which is not just the same yeah, but, detective. But it's connecting the two, so yeah. now you know. You know it's a it's a shared universe. Yeah, it's sort of like James Bond and you know you only live twi- die twice, whatever type stuff. It's like yeah, I like that. What did you think about Glass Onion, Alex? It was my favorite movie of the last year. It, wow. it ended up top. It, Wait a minute. It beat top, The Woman it, King? Now, what the fuck? It, 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 it beat deep. Top Gun? Well, Top Gun was in my, it was like number six or seven on my top ten. Okay. Okay, so what's the top ten now? All right. You want me to, you want me to give you yes. my top ten? Oh, 10? my God. Okay, Please. I will, I will Very give special you my top, top ten, 10 episode. Let me pull. Let me pull it up because I I wrote it out in my notes pad. <laughs> All right. So well, it's actually a, t- a top fifteen because I get some honorable mentions. But okay. So number one, Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. Number right. two, The Woman King. Number three, wow, really? Nope. Naturally. Nope was my Oof. number three. Number four was The Fablemans, Steven Spielberg's film. I saw The Fablemans. Number five was The Batman. Number mm-hmm. six. Was Puss in Boots The Last Wish? Wow. Freaking amazing movie. Number seven was Top Gun Maverick. Number eight was Everything Everywhere All at Once. Number nine was The Banshees of Inish, of Inish Sharon. And number 10 was Funny Pages. Wait, what was uh, number nine? Uh, the Banshees of Inish Sharon. Is that the uh, Colin Farrell? Yeah, it's really great. It's a really fun movie. It's Is a it? funny movie. I, I want, yeah, it's, it's a drama, but it's funny. I have. Yeah, I watched a little bit of it. I'll watch. I'll pay attention yeah, to it if you like. It's really it. beautiful. I, although yeah, I, it's, I like ju- a, it's now at forty-five. I just said that uh, I will pay attention to it if you like it, but um, based on uh, Nope, I don't know if I can trust the uh, the Alex rating system anymore. Yeah, oh, you didn't like Nope. Uh, oh, maybe no. I completely missed something. Maybe it bears another rewatch. No, I but actually, like Nope also. The way you hyped think- it up, though, I was very uh, bored during the entire thing. Yeah, oh, wow. here's the thing. No, if you take out the chimpanzee stuff, what was the chimp's name? Gordy. Gordy. Cosmo. If you take out Gordy, nope is like a four. Like out of ten. Oh, out of five? Like a two. Oh. No, it's like a two. <laughs> yeah, Gordy, you're getting up. 
you're back up to like a four. That's that they re- without the Gordy stuff, without that that B plot. Nope is a is not a good movie. The, I love uh, Nope. Love it. I thought Nope no. was good actually. A little Spielberg action right there. <sighs> now, psyched. I would agree. I, I would say for me, my number one movie of the year was Everything Everywhere All at Once. Great movie. I would say Everything Everywhere All at Once, number one. Number two, Top Gun. Number three, Batman. Good movie. Right. Uh, If you're looking at, I I think uh, you round out my top five with, uh, Fableman's was strong. Fableman's was really good. Um, And, uh, Chuck Glass Onion up there. Chuck Glass Onion up there. You know you want it. I will say Glass Onion, I liked this, this movie much better than I liked Knives Out. I love both of them, but I love Glass Onion more. I adore this movie. I don't know if Glass Onion's top five, but... Uh, it's a pretty banging movie. Now, what's surprising is Alex does not have Avatar in his top 15 or whatever. Uh, no. it's in my, it's, it is in my top 15. Oh, okay. it, it's in my honorable mentions list, uh, along with Honk for Jesus, Save Your Soul, Barbarian, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, and The Adam Project. Never heard of any of those. <laughs> You need to watch Barbarian. We talked about Barbarian at length a couple of episodes. We well, that's okay. It's a good movie. Adam Project's a great movie too with Brad Reynolds. Fun little, fun little. little it's a fun little romp. I would classify it as a, a, fun a fun little family romp. It's a great little movie. I I really I had a ball watching that. It was great. Uh, I'll tell you with the back to the Fablemans. I took the whole family went to the Fablemans. Wow. And uh, this is a sign of a. Th- I think this is the first like Spielberg experience the kids have had. Like you know they've yeah. seen Spielberg movies, but I think this kind of like it's the kids it's not a movie. Backstory. Yeah, it's not a movie that a thirteen year old necessarily should be engaged. You know, no. like love, right. but they were they loved that movie. How about that? And yeah. so they got the whole the this is all about the love of filmmaking, you know? And so uh, they, uh, and it's a long movie and, and they were like, that's it. That's it. Like not, not that it was a bad ending, but they wanted it to keep going. They wanted more of a, uh, a, a more finality, a more final sort of, you know, uh, ending than just kind of the abstract, you know, him meeting with, um, Oh God, John, uh, John Ford. John- John Ford, yeah. So Ford, yeah. But yeah, Fableman's is very good. I, that would be in my top five. It's a good movie. Good huh. little movie. Long movie. Good movie. Yeah, well, you got two thirteen-year-olds sitting through that movie about yeah. filmmaking, and uh, and you know, and, and it, it's more, it's it's very American graffiti-ish, you know, <clears throat> like the film, a time that they have no nostalgia for, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. a, a film style that they have no nostalgia for. Right, yep. <laughs> but they're sucked in to that point. That's it's a good movie. Yeah, oh, so, I love it. I'll watch it when it comes on streaming. Brad, have you not watched Glass Onion? Uh, no, I have. I've watched it twice, Alex. You watched it twice? Yeah. Well, I watched it once, uh, pretty much by myself, and then I'm like, I think the boys would watch it, so I made them watch it, and they enjoyed it. Yeah, I've seen it four times now. All right. I've had a real. I just. I can. I've just turned it on just in the background sometimes, just because yeah. just, I just love the joke so much, and I just had such a good time with it. There There's go. a. There were some good. There were some good movies this year. How about that? Big, last year, there were some good movies last year. You know. To really? give it some credit, I thought it was going to be a stinky year, but you know, James Cameron might actually make two billion dollars at the box office. I didn't think that was going to happen. Well, you know what's interesting is. This movie is going to break even, but the next one will show a profit because he he filmed so much extra Mm. material during the filming of this. Yeah. So uh, they're going to come in like half, like 30 percent of the budget of the next movie has been paid for with footage they filmed during this one. So, yeah, so he's basically just I mean, I I really did doubt James Cameron, but I. I was wrong in doubting him, I guess, because he just proved once again that he just dominates the box office no matter what. Even if it's just another 
kind of retread of his first movie that has a very loose plot, just very simple. But audiences yeah. love that shit. Audiences love Pandora. They do. People there's love a, Pandora. Yeah, and that's part of what we what we were talking about before you got on, Alex. Is yeah, there, there's gaping plot holes. There's logic jumps that don't make sense. They spent way too much time bringing back uh, Stephen Lang, you know, uh, which how, how many how many millions of dollars or billions of dollars did the did the Earth government spend to put him back on the table a decade later to take out Jake Sully, right? With when, when he got his ass handed to him the first time, yeah. Uh, it's the, a bit silly. Uh, yeah. But, the other thing know, that I, uh, uh, at risk of repeating myself, the other thing I felt was super wonky with it, Alex, was the, uh, you know, the MacGuffin in this movie was the cerebral fluid from the space whales. But when they when they finally go through all that trouble of hunting down the whale, you know, uh, like use, using all these depth charges to like, you know, funnel it where they wanted it to go. They shoot it with the harpoon. They go through all this trouble to get the whale. And then they drill up into its brain pan and get the serum, the, the uh, cerebral fluid. And he goes, you see that right there? That's about $20 million. That's, that is a terrible business model. You, you a- flew to an entirely different galaxy <laughs> to create this expedition to go get this space whale juice, uh, and you're only going to sell twenty million dollars, sell it for twenty million dollars, and this is like two hundred years in the future. I guess inflation doesn't happen. <laughs> See, my favorite thing right now is that James Cameron says he's like we may go explore the Ash people, and I'm like, are we just doing Avatar: The Last Airbender? Yeah, we got we got, we got Earth people, we got Water people, now we're getting Fire people. What the hell? Why are we doing this? But you know yeah. what? He's making a crap ton of money. Yeah, let so him have his at money. This point, whatever. Hey, has anybody seen the well? I haven't. No, no one's seen that I, yet. It's one, of, it's one of those movies that just sounds so sad. Like it's just like, am I in the mood to go see just a really sad movie? Well, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's, you're going to the movie to find out how this guy screwed up his life. And how he's and, gonna die, okay. and how he's gonna die, <laughs> and try to make amends before he, he dies. Die? Does he die? Yeah, the whole plot is that he has like forty-eight hours to live. Why? Because he's too he's overweight and he's he's addicted to eating. He ate a time bomb. <laughs> I was gonna say, is that what he did? <laughs> A forty-eight hour time bomb is gonna blow up in forty-eight yep. hours. Well, no, he he says he's a he has com, he's a compulsive eater. Like it's just he has a lot of trauma and stuff, and so yeah, he's just gonna die because he's just yeah. so overweight. He's just gonna die. Hey, uh, didn't come out this year, but something that you may have seen or may have commented on two years ago, Alex. I uh, saw Licorice Pizza. Did you? Good movie. It was good. good. Yeah, it catches a little. On. I keep wanting to watch it. Catches a little flack for being uh, a little pedophilia, but uh, you know that's what makes yeah. it interesting. It's what's very that movie about? What's it's it about? about? It's about a fifteen-year-old who falls in love with a twenty-five-year-old, and hijinks ensue. Yeah, uh, and she's in the movie industry. What's that streaming on, Brad? He is uh, Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Prime. It's really, it's a, it's a like, it's a fun it little definitely jaunt. captures that. It captures that generation pretty well, and the cinematography is really good. Yeah, it's a pretty um, movie. It's just, it's just, is like, how comfortable are you with the idea of pedophilia for two hours? Yeah, <laughs> that's really the question. Now, uh, mm-hmm. Rhetorical question. Uh, let's see what <laughs> else to have watched recently. We watched uh, last weekend. We watched the original taking of Pelham One Two Three with Walter Matthau. I don't know. I've That's not a good seen one. That. That's a good one. I oh, I did watch. I don't. Remember, I think I saw this oh. movie like six years ago, but I didn't watch it again. I watched Seven again. Oh, yeah, I've watched that in the past couple um, of years. Yeah, it was pretty good. Go uh, it, I remember. I was a little let down by the ending on this like newest viewing. I was like, oh yeah, I guess that's just how it ends. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's a head in the box, and that's, that's it. That's it. That's pretty much it. You know, I was going to ask while I go, uh, because, again, uh, I mentioned this earlier, or last year, rather. Uh, I mentioned that I watched it and caught a little bit of flack about it. 
but lo and behold, it won like whatever best uh, song or something like that at the uh, People's Choice or whatever we had recently. R R R. Have you watched I that? I just watched R R R. Did you really? God, I will... Yeah, that's a fun movie. That's a fun little romp. It's so absurd. Isn't it's so a, stupid. Isn't that the Indian uh, it is. superhero movie? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's just ridiculously fun. Like, there's no way to not have a good time watching RR. There you go. That's a. That's it's a, really fun. Yeah. Yeah. There's really you can't go wrong. Good for you. I'm glad you watched it. Make it. Make a couple drinks while you do it, though. I think that'll just make it better. Like, definitely buy yourself some beers, kick back, get a pizza, and watch RRR. You'll have a really good time. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it like, sober. Yeah, but intoxicated, I, I can imagine that being a lot more fun. Because <laughs> it's mm. so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. It's, movie. it's pretty ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. Are we just talking about movies now? At yeah, we're, point, we're uh, winding, hopefully winding down here. I will. I have a, a what you're looking at. Oh, what are you looking at? So, and we talked about the menu earlier, Alex. Did you watch the menu? I did watch the menu. That's another movie I watched. I watched a lot of movies. <laughs> what did you think about the menu? I thought it was pretty good. I had a really good time. It's all right. I think it's, I think it's, it's pretty all right. Fun. I'll tell you what is in the exact same vein. But I enjoyed more was uh, White Lotus. Yeah, I haven't never. I can't get into White Lotus all that much. Really? Yeah, I had trouble getting to season one, and my roommate was like, "You know what? You should just if you're not good, if you don't want to finish it, I don't really recommend finishing it." So I just kind of gave up. And just, okay. season just, one, I haven't watched season two, but season one was pretty strong, and it's the same sort of thing. It's it's the these. Uh, upstairs, it's upstairs, downstairs, right? You've got the the servants, and you've got these elite rich people, and uh, uh, it's pretty enjoyable. Brad, have you watched uh, White Lotus? Yeah, yeah, they were they were fun. They were fine, I guess. Not fun, I said. I was still waiting to see if there, Audrey Plaza was going to be doing any nude scenes in this uh, season, but she did not. Oh, darn it! Spoiler. Oh, I did watch. Em- I watched Emily the Criminal. Aubrey Plaza. I watched the last 30 minutes of it. I know how it ends. I thought it was fine. I, a fine. lot of people like adored it, and I was like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's a pretty, it's a low stakes thriller. It's a relatable thriller, but like a low stakes thriller. It's yeah. like, all right. Nothing special. It's like, it's, it's like Ocean's Eleven for like, I don't, like a college dropout. <laughs> yes. Alex, uh, I'll tell you one that's, I'll tell you what the other one in my top five. Love so my that. top five. Is uh, everything everywhere all at once? Top Gun, uh, the Batman, That's right? True. Yep. The Fablemans, yeah. And Confess Fletch. Oh yeah. I was about to. I want to watch Confess Fletch, but it's on a streaming service, so I can't freaking watch it. I actually, paid for I, it. Oh, I bought. I bought it on sale. Brad, it went on sale after we said that. Uh, yeah. It was on HBO Max. No. Mm-hmm. No, it's on on Paramount. It's on Paramount, Alex. Uh, and, <laughs> and I went ahead and bought it uh, when it went on sale after Christmas because even though it was still on Paramount, I'm like, you know what? This this movie deserves my money. But yeah, confess, Fletch. I, so, uh, did anyone else go see Puss in Boots? Was that the only one? You're, You're the, the only, only one. one. Y'all need to go to the theater and watch Puss in Boots. Like legitimately, just run. All Don't right. walk. Run! Mm-hmm. It's so freaking good. The okay. animation's gorgeous. It's an absolutely stunning movie. If you like Spider Verse, then you're gonna love it. Like it's just it's just gorgeous animation and a great script and a great story. And everyone's acting their little behinds off or talking their behinds off. It's so fun. Such a good movie. Is this still like a ninety-eight on Rotten Tomatoes or something? Yeah, it should win. Be- Sadly, I, Pinocchio won Best Animated Feature at the Golden Globes, but I think it should have gone to Puss in Boots. Anybody watch no, the Golden Pinocchio? Globes are up for sale anyway. Pinocchio was fine. I didn't watch it yet. It was fine. It's a lot. It's just like Guillermo del Toro's other movie that I can't remember the name of. Um, the other one about like, like fascism. Pan's <laughs> Labyrinth. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, it's just that again. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, 
Yeah, it's kind of, it, but it's it's charming. Great, great stop Brian, motion. Did y'all finish Willow? Did you watch Willow, Alex? We. No, Brian was watching it. I did not. I I never knew Willow, so I didn't bother. I never knew Willow. <laughs> We That's haven't finished it. The kids are wanting to finish it. The uh, we got into like uh, the Christmas movie marathon stuff, mm. and so didn't uh, we? We got to get back onto some of our. We got to finish Andor. We got to finish uh, Willow. Um, there's did a few watch, others. Did you watch Spirited with Ryan Reynolds? And we Will watched Carol? Spirited. Uh, good afternoon. Bad. Good afternoon. <laughs> it was pretty bad, but you know what? <laughs> I like some of the music. It's fine, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so, well, uh, Alex, uh, oh, Joshua went to state for their one act uh, or their uh, their one act play, which I don't understand why it's called a one act. It's it was multiple acts. I don't know why they called it a one act. I guess because it was thirty minutes or less. Yeah, you have to cut it down to where you can just perform it in less than an hour. Yeah. So, but the uh, their one act went to state. Look and at they, that. Yeah, they performed it today at the uh, Orange County Convention Center, like the yeah. huge convention center. And they uh, uh, they got superior and everything, and Joshua got, like, special, like, uh, uh, recognition from the judges. So, wow, that's pretty sick. Wow, that's, that's awesome. Cool. So that's he's sick. the lead in it. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty Heck cool. yeah. So and the, the, it's a whole thing. Like I guess they do. Like it's junior thespians. They do an opening sa- ceremony tonight, yep. and then they got stuff all through the weekend. Uh, he's got two or three other things he's performing on Saturday. He's got like a it's a duet, but it's an acting duet, not like a vocal duet. Um, he's got anyway. Long story short, he uh, yeah. that's freaking awesome. So I miss. I miss going to little conventions. Those are always fun. Little state state competitions and stuff. Yeah. So, awesome. Heck yeah. We're, we like art. We do we do art. Art is fun. Hey, speaking of which, almost kind of the movie industry, but so I guess it's not really plays. Uh, I'm looking through a streaming services to see what I watched Violet. It's um it stars Olivia Munn, everybody's favorite Olivia Munn, uh, and it was directed by uh, Justine Bateman. <laughs> Remember what? back when Justine Bateman caught a lot of flack for looking old? Yeah. I think it was but when she was doing a press for this movie. It's a pretty good movie. I enjoyed it. Uh, but it's about yeah, the One of the pod men was the not movie. feeling it. What's that? She's still looking old. One of the pod men was <laughs> not <laughs> feeling it. Yeah, Justine Bateman is looking her age. Fifty-four, that's what I recall. <laughs> speaking of speaking of fifty-four, Elvis's daughter died. Yep. Yeah, old news. We, out, we talked about it. Damn it. Yep. And it's great that we, that we, she's just referred to by her more famous father's name <laughs> and relationship <laughs> to him. I don't. I don't. I don't know her name. I I'll be honest. Name. But but it's well. Now, did, Priscilla work. Presley died. How many years ago? Priscilla Presley's still alive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is she? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm getting her mixed up with um, the Judds. Ah. Priscilla Mama Judd. Judge. I mean, Priscilla, Priscilla Presley, the 14 year old bride. Yeah. Jesus Christ, what happened to Justine Bates? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not good. Down yeah. the rabbit hole we go. Yeah. Time. An PMR. hour and 45 minutes, and PMR is is really, really committing to the podcast now. Oh, I really came in at the last minute and yeah, just I'm know. like, here. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Alex. No problem. That's what I'm here for. God damn. <laughs> you, don't gotta, you don't gotta do that to her. Leave her alone. If her age did that to her. Well, look at uh, you. What about Tina Yothers? Let me see what Tina. Like. What about I Tiffany? Mean, yeah, but, but here's the thing: Tina Others was never attractive. <laughs> Not in any universe was Tina Others attractive. Not in any. Well, There's hell. always an old hag. No, actually, uh, Tina Others don't look as bad as freaking Justine Bateman. All right, what about Meredith Baxter? Still hot. 
<laughs> Still doable. Are these, all, are these all just sitcom people? I am like, not sure these? about it. They're, they're all people from uh, whatever that show yeah, was. Yeah. Show. Looks better than Justine Bateman. She's like 40 years older. Wait a minute. Are you looking at Meredith Baxter today? Yeah. Yeah, too bad she's plays for the other team. I mean, that is not bad. <laughs> That's not the Meredith Baxter. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, Let's agree to disagree. I hope none of your none of your professional careers are ever affected by what is said on this podcast. <laughs> no. too late. You know what? Not that great of that a career. That makes two of us, Alex. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> We're just stating facts. I mean, it's not like no one can look at that and say, oh, she's, she's an ugly bitch. I'd hit it. Like, I'm in, we're just saying she's an ugly bitch. I didn't call her a bitch. No. I didn't call her a bitch. I guess I didn't call her a bitch. I, I do. Uh, I, I, there is always this, you know, uh, concern in the back of my head that I'm going to get called in by my employer and told right. that I can no longer <laughs> associate with Bob <Pod> Manron. <laughs> <laughs> you hope for that oh, day. Wow. It's either him or gainful employment. <laughs> uh, well, Alex. Yes. Uh, so to <laughs> to change this, uh, did you ever watch Annette? Adam Driver. Uh, I I did watch Annette. I watched it on a flight. Wow. <laughs> uh, it was pretty good. I, I liked it. it I did too. Time. It's a weird. It's a weird movie, but I mean, if you're if you're down to just watch some weird shit on screen, then it's pretty fun. What about White Noise? Have you watched? It's a weird musical. No, I haven't watched White Noise yet. I plan to. I love Noah Baumbach, but I heard mixed things, so I'm a little like iffy. I thought the trailer looked pretty fun, but I also could see where it's just a lot of a lot. A lot of a lot. What about Black Bear? A lot of a lot. Audrey Plaza. I'm like talking to Chris. I've not watched Black Bear yet. <laughs> okay. I'm going through my Nor Amazon. Have watched, uh, Nor have I watched the TV show The Bear, which I do. It's on my watch list. Is that uh, the same as Cocaine Bear? Because I'd like to see that. Yeah, I want to see Cocaine Bear. I'm I watched the first episode of The Bear, and it was really good. I enjoyed it. Shit. Fuck. That means I do have to watch it. Yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's pretty good. I think I... I would recommend watching the whole thing, but uh, I haven't watched it. Is anybody going to watch that 90s show on Netflix? you damn right I am. No. All those no. stoner children? No. Hey, what do y'all mean no? Y'all used to watch the 70s show back in the 90s. I never watched the I 70s never, show either. I, I never hate to break it to you. Yeah, I've never watched it. DMR's all alone. It, it had a laugh track. I can't abide a laugh track. It, it it pisses me off that they think that they need to tell me when something's funny. If you need to tell me when something's funny, it wasn't funny. Seinfeld had, had a laugh track. Had a laugh Every track. show in the 90s had a laugh track. I'm talking about anything after, uh, uh, really, anything after Malcolm in the Middle. If it's, if it's after Malcolm in the Middle and you felt the need to have a laugh track, that's just lazy writing. Okay. Wow. You heard it here first. There you go. Take yeah. that, Hollywood. Do you like Modern mm. Modern Family? Doesn't have a laugh, laugh track. Do you like Modern Family? I like Modern Family. I have to say, Modern Family has got some great writing. <laughs> that shows. In the top notch writer. Top notch writer. Top notch. But, but uh, Big Bang Theory is superior writing. Superior. Garbage. Uh, Alex, have you watched, uh, um, oh my God, uh, the heir apparent to Modern Family um, on Hulu? Uh, what is it? Oh my God. Paul Reiser, Rachel Bloom. Reboot. King. Reboot. Have you watched Reboot? I've tried. No, I haven't. I did not like it. Really? I yeah, I, I got to give it another shot. <laughs> well, Episode, I think it's episode three is when the writer's room shows up, and it's great. Okay, maybe I'll, then you said that that was the one that she said that was a really funny episode. episode. Yeah, basically, she wants to have all these meta-type stories and, and, and all this kind of stuff, and 
she wants it written you know, from a perspective. And he's like, no, I got these like uh, I got these uh, TV writers that know how to punch up a script and know, know what's funny. And so he hires all of his his buddy writers uh, to come in and work in the room with all of her, you know, her millennial writers. And it's uh, that's that's where the, the show really takes off. There's one writer in there. Uh, I think her name is Irma. But God damn it. She is hilarious. So. All right, I'll give it. A, I'll give it another try. Give it a, give it a so, third try. Another try. Um, you know what I have been doing? I have been. I saw a trailer for a TV show that's coming to an end next this this coming year. Oh. And it got me sad, so I went back last night and I watched an episode. I watched an episode of The Flash. I just oh. turned it on. Oh. I had a. I, I we don't talk back about the Flash a long time, boys. Self. We got we to gotta tune back in. There's only nine episodes. We got to watch all of them. Brad, Every to make a bumper for the Flash. I guess so. We'll bring the Flash bumper back. We got it. We got it. Run, we Barry. Run. It starts on February 8th. We got it. We got it all key in. We, we don't need to know what happened for the last six seasons, but we got to know how yeah. it ends. How oh, it ends. Awesome. Are they running out of fast villains? I feel well, they're like doing, they're doing Red pun. Death. They're doing Red Death this season. So run, they haven't uh, run out of fast villains. <laughs> and Cobalt Blue, it looks like that's what I heard. It's Red Death and Cobalt Blue. I what? just searched. I just searched the Flash on Twitter, and I was like, "What are they talking about?" <laughs> and that's mm. what they were talking about. So that's the so I think I think Batwoman is going to be Red Death that, though, not Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's all but confirmed. Yeah, so we got to tune in. We got to know can Barry run faster? I mean, I feel like yeah. he can, but know? I'm not sure. I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like no one needs to know. know. It's Stephen Amell's coming back. Yeah, yep. the truck. Why not? Alex, have you watched? Speaking of Stephen Amell, have you watched Heels yet? No, I haven't. You need to watch say, Heels. Stephen Amell, there's something mixed he, up, messed up in his head a little bit. Can he really act? Like I don't know if Stephen Amell can really act. <laughs> uh, well, he's good in Heels, and Heels is Michael Waldron. Ooh. He's the yeah. You loved Loki. I did love Loki, but I didn't like Doctor Strange. Hmm. But yeah, it's Michael Waldron. Heels gives you a deep cut into the world of professional wrestling. Hmm. You love wrestling? It's, in, it's enjoyable. Isn't it, isn't it on like FX or Stars? It's on Stars. All right, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll check it out. We'll see. We'll see. I don't we'll know. See. Only if you I have time. Know. There's just so much TV. There's so much to watch. That's the problem. Is I, I, I got like 20 things I need to watch. Well, that's like why I enjoy stuff like White Lotus, because it was only six episodes. True. Now, they were hour to hour and 15 minute episodes, but uh, you can knock it out in a weekend. Yeah. You- Heels is 30 minute episodes. So, yeah, you can knock, even though it's like 10 or 11 episodes, again, you can knock it out in like a... A Saturday, so yeah, I prefer those. Like uh, Timber wants to watch Yellowstone, and I'm like, God, that's how many seasons of that shit is there? Like seven? And there's like three. Yeah, but there's like three different series, isn't there? No, yeah, there are three different series, but you can just watch the main ones, the best one. So, Um, you like it? I mean. And it's only like ten episodes a season, so it's not like you're. It's just hard. It's, not, it's easier when you're catching things week to week, but once you miss it, it's just like, do I really want to go back and watch all of it? Like I can do the week to week easier than I can do the bench. Bench just takes a lot of effort. That's true. You got to set aside that time. You, you just, when you bench like stuff, you can't watch. So, so you you. you you don't want to binge a, uh, a show that would take four hours, but you'll watch Glass Onion four times. <laughs> yes. That's commitment, buddy. <laughs> I, I, re- 
I like the jokes. I like them. Well, I like the jokes. I love your commitment to Glass Onion, but uh, I want to see a little bit more commitment to the Podmen in 2023. We have I'll a goal. My- we have a goal, Alex, oh, of hitting no. episode 200 by the end of this year. <laughs> what episode are we on? I think 188. So we just need to film once a month. That's what I'm saying. Can you? Do you think you can commit to that? I think I can commit to that. I can commit to 12 weeks All right. of pod minting. Here's a more important question, Alex. Uh, AMC popped up on my uh, app today, that uh, or no, yesterday, that uh, tickets to Jesus Revolution are available now. Ah. They are available now. You can uh, buy tickets to go see Jesus Revolution. But my question is, can I get free passes to see Jesus Revolution? <laughs> no. No, you need to it so, needs to rake in some money. No. We need Bam. to make a, we need a hundred million dollars at the box office. So, so go. I Alex, I don't go, think that's happening. But go 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 watch it. Go get some uh, oh. well cause I'm cranium juice from a well and sell it. Like, it comes uh, out a week after Ant Man. There's nothing else to go see. Go other than Ant Man a second time. Other than Ant Man a second time. But what would you rather see? Jesus Revolution or Ant Man Quantumania? Yeah. That's <sighs> good point. That's the uh, question you had to pose to, for yourself. Paul okay. Rudd or Kelsey Grammer? <sighs> I don't know oh, that I was. You need to quit while you're ahead. Yeah, you may want to quit while you're in. Uh, <laughs> so what? Let me get this. No free passes. That's what, that's what <laughs> let me just get me. this clear. No, you, you, I can. I, I mean, if you have AMC A list, there's a free ticket. I am A list. So you get. So there you go. There's, there's a your free, free ticket. Yeah. I gave you a free ticket. All right. That's a. Hey, it's a free ticket, is it not? It's true. I just gave you a free ticket. I mean, well, what are the kids going to say? I mean, they're, they're going to love it. They're going to love the movie, <laughs> especially if they have to pay for it. They'll or they'll yeah. they'll look forward to it if they have to earn it. <laughs> I'll make it's, them use their own money. <laughs> yeah, it's worth every penny. It's worth every penny. Hell, you may want to go see it twice. You may see it more times than Ant Man. Yeah, you never know. I might just use my A list three times over the next week. I mean, whether I watch it or not is <laughs> is immaterial. I've seen it seven times. Wow! So you know that means that means something. That's more some than no. Nope. Some some of those weren't by choice. Some of those were for work. But hey, I've seen it seven times, and I had a good time every time. Alex, whenever you have to punch up a script, I would yeah. like you to use this question. <laughs> like whenever they're like, "Well, Alex, what do you think?" Here's your get out of jail free card. Even if you haven't read the script, it's who's the Han Solo? There you go. It's a good, it's a good question. <clears throat> I, I, I enjoyed the script. You know, I, I, beautifully written. But I have one question for you: Who's the Han Solo? I think I think in Jesus Revolution, Kelsey Grammer is the Han Solo. Really? Okay. Well, there you yeah. go. Didn't Kelsey Grammer audition for Han Solo? Maybe I don't know. What? I got no idea. I got no ideas. But seems probable. Seems, seems you'll have to go find out if Kelsey Grammer's the Han Solo in Jesus Revolution coming to theaters February twenty third, twenty twenty three. Buy your tickets now. All right, that tickets is, on sale now. And it's with that, now. I think that uh, uh, closes out our first episode of twenty twenty three, guys. Congratulations. We're yeah. and possibly our last episode of 2023. It's probably, well, but the, the way we're going. ready to go to bed. It, well, it's, it, we're at the two hour is, mark, and uh, it is almost, I'm so running out of tape. Uh, yeah. I'm running out of tape. I've got two. You uh, don't use tape. Uh, yeah, this is all analog recording here. <laughs> mm. Brad's got well, I don't know about here. that. It's gone retro. Yeah, gone retro. All right. <laughs> Oh, no. uh, so we only have like 11, what, whatever, 11 more podcasts to go before the end of the year. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh, thanks for thanks for a great year last year for a couple of listeners that we've had. We may have picked up a few last year. Uh, maybe we'll pick up a few more and Brian keep punching on that Instagram. 
and I'll try to get my wife to like uh, things as opposed to just scrolling by them. I'll just say this. I hope this wasn't the episode that Justine B- Bateman decided to check us out. Oh. <laughs> hey, I liked her movie. I didn't say anything else. I just said yeah. I liked her movie. I, I like I, like her movie. He just doesn't like her face. <laughs> yeah, just don't like, like her face, but I liked her movie. If she had <laughs> Olivia Munn's face, I'd be okay with it. Justine, um, three out of four pod men appreciate what you do. Yeah. No, not that. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's no. more like two out of yes, four. I don't know who Justine no. Bateman is. Well, uh, Alex, you make you find her attractive, Brian? Brian, do you find her attractive now, today? When I think exactly. of a teenage yes. <laughs> pod man <laughs> Brian. 15-year-old pod boy Brian. <laughs> pod boy what Brian. What about a 50-year-old pod man Brian? And here's a Sitting of on that shag carpet. Tell me. W- counting the minutes for family ties to start, she was a big part of that experience. Yeah. Okay, what about now? I'm sure the film she directed is top notch. <laughs> it's good. You may actually like it, um, Alex. What it's about, about the, the movie picture? industry. So. Show you the that's all. That's my favorite kind of movies. Yeah. You know, I like you'll, movies about the movies. Yeah, you like movies about the movies, and again, soon enough you'll you'll hate them as much as I do. But uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you'll hate the industry. Yeah, that's okay. All right, you'll learn what, well, now that you're in your twenties. You'll learn. Now that I finally reached my 20s. All right. Two years in. Tape is running thin, guys. Uh, Hey, let's keep it up. 11 more episodes, and uh, we can do it this time. But until next time, save it for the podcast.